Hey guys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you are fine and safe in this time of coronavirus outbreak. So I decided to make a video for you people on this COVID-19 disease and the coronavirus. So guys, let's first of all make it clear that COVID-19 is actually the disease and the virus which causes the COVID-19 disease is a virus that belongs to a family of viruses which are called as coronaviruses and the name of this virus is the SARS virus uh, or the SARS covirus 2. Now, if we talk about the virus, the virus consists of an outer envelope which is called as the capsid and this capsid is formed of proteins. Now, within this capsid, we have certain glycoproteins which are kind of embedded in the capsid. And these glycoproteins may be of various types, but the most important glycoproteins which are important are the S glycoproteins because these glycoproteins will act as docking molecules for this virus. Now, after the capsid, we have the genome of the virus. Inside the capsid, we have the genome of the virus, and the genome of coronavirus or the SARS CoV 2 is single stranded RNA. So this is all about the virus that you need to know. Now, talking about how does this virus spreads from one person to the other. So major, there are two routes of the spread of the virus and among these two routes, the most important route is the respiratory route. Now what happens over there is that as the person who is infected from coronavirus, he sneezes or he coughs this will result in the liberation of the virus particles from his respiratory tract into the air. Now, a normal person in his surroundings will contract these respiratory droplets and these respiratory droplets containing the virus will enter into the respiratory tract of the normal person and they will cause the disease over there. So, this is the respiratory route. The second route via which the coronavirus spreads is the fecal route. In this route, what happens over there is that the infected person will throw the virus in his fecal matter and if the fecal matter comes in contact with the normal person, then the virus can gain the entry into the system of the normal person and they cause the infection over there. So this is the route of transmission of the coronavirus. Now let's take a look at the disease and the pathophysiology of the disease which is caused by the coronavirus. Now as the virus it enters into the respiratory tract of a person, it will go via the trachea into the bronchi and the bronchioles and ultimately it will enter into the narrowest part of the respiratory tract which is the alveoli. So before we take on what the virus causes to the alveoli, we should look at the normal physiology of the alveoli. So within the alveoli, we have three types of cell. These are the type 1 pneumocytes, the type 2 pneumocytes and we have the macrophages. And adjacent to the alveoli, we have the small blood vessels or the capillaries which play a very important role in the transport of the gases. Now, now the role of type 1 pneumocytes is actually to play a part in the exchange of gases as these are flat squamous cells and via these type 1 pneumocytes the oxygen in the alveoli it will enter into the blood vessels and the carbon dioxide which was carried by the blood vessel will be eliminated out through the alveoli. This is the function of type 1 pneumocytes. If we talk about the type 2 pneumocytes, the type 2 pneumocytes contain a chemical which is called as the surfactant and the role of surfactant is to reduce the surface tension in the alveoli which is trying to collapse the alveoli. The surfactant will eliminate the surface tension and hence it will prevent the alveoli from collapsing. Also within the surfactant, within the type 2 pneumocyte we have certain chemicals which are called as cytokines which normally play a role in minor inflammation which are occurring in the alveoli but they are not released in large quantities or large amounts. And the third cells are the, of course the macrophages and the role of macrophages is to eliminate any type of bacteria or noxious element which enters into the respiratory tract. 
so this is all about the normal physiology of the alveoli and the uh, circulation around the alveoli now let's talk what happens when the virus it enters into the alveolar system now as the sars virus it enters into the alveolar system it uses its s glycoproteins it uses its s glycoprotein to dock with the receptor on a type 2 pneumocyte and the receptor which is present on the top on the type 2 pneumocyte is actually the ace receptor is actually a protein sorry is actually a protein which is called as the ace protein or the angiotensin converting enzyme protein which has a different function but here it is functioning as a receptor which is allowing the sars virus to dock no as a result of docking of the of the sars virus with the ace receptor the sars virus are able to enter into the cell and as they enter into the cell that is a type 2 pneumocyte they will release their single stranded rna particles and these single stranded rna particles will then undergo translation via the ribosomes and they will release or they will produce various kinds of polypeptides and now these various types of polypeptides will arrange and they will form the new virus particles and these new virus particles will cause the destruction of the cell leading to the liberation of millions and millions of new virus particles which are ready to penetrate and infect the other cells also as a result of the rupture of the type 2 pneumocytes the cytokines which were normally in the cytoplasm of the type 2 pneumocyte they will be released into the alveoli and these cytokines are actually pro inflammatory cytokines okay so these are pro inflammatory cytokines that means they will cause the inflammation within the alveoli and the cytokines which are released include interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and another important chemical which is called as the tumor necrosis factor alpha or the tnf alpha now let's look at what happens when these cytokines they interact within the alveolar system now within the alveolar system as these cytokines they begin to liberate from the alveoli this will cause the inflammatory changes in the blood vessels which are adjacent to the alveoli now this will cause the exudation of fluid from the blood vessels into the alveolar spaces as the permeability of the blood vessels is increased now as a result of the liberation of the fluid all the alveoli will be filled with this fluid and this will this will play a very important role as the fluid increases within the alveoli this will cause the difficulty in the exchange of the gases which was occurring normally and as a result of this the patient will get difficulty in breathing now this is the time when most of the patients will require the ventilatory support also the cytokines which are released they will enter via the blood vessel into the systemic circulation via the systemic circulation they will reach almost every organ of the body and they will cause the destruction in various parts of the body or various organs of the body the primarily involved organs include the kidneys and the heart as a result of the involvement of the kidneys there will be an elevation in the blood urea nitrogen or simply the urea and the creatinine and as a result of the involvement of the heart there will be an elevation in the troponins further these cytokines will reach up to the hypothalamus and when they reach the hypothalamus they will increase the temperature within the body leading to fever so this is all about the coronavirus the sars cov virus 2 and the covid 19 disease and uh, i am sure that i made it easier for you to understand that the key features are acute respiratory distress syndrome fever pneumonia and of course a major complication which is the multi organ dysfunction syndrome which occurs when the cytokines destroy the normal uh, body organs like the kidneys and the heart so i hope you like this video do subscribe to my youtube channel for more videos like this